Hi everyone, after releasing the Vivo V40 Pro review and first impressions of it, I got some questions to compare it to a different device, a device that you requested quite a bit as well, and there's a video link in the description for it, the Honor 200 Pro. So let's find out how the Honor 200 Pro and the Vivo V40 Pro stack up against each other in this mid-range battle. Anyway, let's start with specifications for it, showcase what both of these are capable of. Okay, specifications first, starting with the CPU. On the Honor side, we get the Snapdragon 8S Gen 3, where on the Vivo, we get the MediaTek Dimensity 9200 Plus. For both, they have different memory and RAM configurations. For the Honor, it's going from 256GB up to 1TB, where on the Vivo side, we get 256GB up to 512GB. For the RAM, we get 12 gigabytes up to 16 gigabytes for the Honor 200 Pro, where we get 8 gigabytes up to 12 gigabytes for the Vivo. For IP rating, we get an IP65 rating for the international version of the Honor 200 Pro. However, the Chinese version has an IP rating of 55. Where on the Vivo side, we get an IP6869 rating. For the display, both of them have a 6.78 inch display, but it's OLED with 120Hz for the Honor, where it's an AMOLED with 120Hz for the Vivo. Peak brightness for the Honor is 4000 nits, where it is 4500 nits on the Vivo. For battery, it's a 5200mAh battery for the Honor and a 5500mAh battery for the Vivo. However, unlike the Honor 200 Pro, with the Vivo V40 Pro you get the charger included as well as the case. And now we get to the part where we care more about. The camera hardware. It's a 50 megapixel sensor for both of them when it comes to the main sensor. However, on the Honor 200 Pro, we get a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor size, where we get a 1 over 1.56 inch sensor size on the Vivo, so a bit smaller on the Vivo side. An f stop for both of them of 1.9. For the supporting lenses, we get a 50 megapixel telephoto with an f-stop of 2.4, which is a 2.5 times optical zoom for the Honor, where on the Vivo side we get a 50 megapixel sensor with an f-stop of 1.9 and a sensor size of 1 over 2.5 inch, and it's a 2 times optical zoom. For the ultra wide, we get a 12 megapixel sensor with an f-stop of 2.2 for the Honor, where we get a 50 megapixel sensor size with an f-stop of 2.0 on the Vivo side with a sensor size of 1 over 2.7 inches. Sadly, for the supporting sensors of the Honor, I don't have information as of yet on what size they are. For video recording, both of them are maxed out at 4K 60 frames per second. It's also worth noting that when you use the ultra wide for the Honor 200 Pro, it is limited to 30 frames per second, so you cannot record ultra wide at 60 frames per second. For the front facing camera, both have a 50 megapixel sensor, but an f-stop of 2.1 for the Honor, which is an f-stop of 2.0 for the Vivo, and the Honor has a 2 megapixel sensor next to it, which is a depth sensor. On the Vivo side, you can go up to 60 frames per second, however, on the Honor, it is limited to 4K 30 frames per second. Now, for both of these phones, you have different modes to shoot on. When it comes to the Honor 200 Pro, you have natural, vibrant, and authentic. When it comes to the Vivo, you have vivid, textured, and natural. For the Vivo, I will stick to textured instead of going to any other mode, simply because with the Honor itself, it's very inconsistent on what works best, where with the Vivo, it feels more balanced on all of those. Yes, size natural feels a little bit more natural, and if you kind of want that preference, then sure, select that. But in this comparison, I stayed on textured because I feel like it's a really balanced mode. The others are too, but I just like the textured mode a little bit better because of the contrast that I get as addition. When it comes to the Honor though, I had to switch quite a bit of times to get the best out of the phone. But there are some more issues than just the modes itself. Anyway, let's dive into comparing the shots. And we are starting off with this car shot. Now again, natural on the Honor 200 Pro does mean less contrast. But if we judge the picture by itself, I would say both did a good job in their own way. But also I think both are a bit sharper than I would like it to be. In terms of details, I feel like the Vivo has it a little bit more, but also the sharpening is a little bit more. Now when moving to the ultra wide, in this shot I straight away will give credit to the Honor how similar it feels compared to the main shot, where on the Vivo side it feels a bit overdone with the contrast and the brightness of it itself, where it's quite a bit darker than the main sensor. However, I do feel like the V40 Pro has the better focus on the shot itself though it also has a bit more sharpening going on. For this shot I'm using portrait mode on both and the Honor has way more struggle to capture this kind of shot. I'm using authentic here as well because simply put it works better on a shot like this where it can look washed out in natural. 
straight away. The Vivo has a better focus on it and it feels more natural and that's something important in a shot like this, especially if you do use portrait for shots like this. Though the cabinet does seem to have a little bit less depth on the side of it, which feels a bit more in focus compared to what you get on the Honor. However, an important note, when you use portrait on the Vivo, you can adjust it after the fact, meaning I can turn down the depth of field or put it up, depending on what my preference is. But I can also select a different point to focus on, really giving me a bit more freedom. Where with the Honor, you can neither adjust the point of focus, but you cannot as well change the depth of field. But credit where credit is due, I do like the style that I'm getting here with the Honor 200 Pro. Now with this shot there's so much to say. The Honor at first glance looks like a nice shot and to a degree it is, but it took a while to get there because of the overexposure problems that I had with it, which I talked about on the review of this Honor 200 Pro, which you can check out in the link of the description. But I do like the darker shadows on it and it feels like the green in terms of darkness is really nice as well. However, that green, whatever that color of green is, is turned up in saturation. And the shot is supposed to be authentic, so I feel like that kind of saturation just doesn't look right. And while the green has more saturation on the Vivo as well, compared to what I would like, the image is more balanced and better exposed. Especially when you look at the windmill that is properly exposed compared to the Honor. Now this ultra wide shot, I will straight away say, using the natural on the Honor is easily beaten by the Vivo V40 Pro. This shot looks far more detailed on the Vivo, it has a nicer natural contrast, colors in general are more balanced and the Honor just feels more washed out in comparison. It removes depth in the shot and phones with small sensors need every bit of depth that you can get and shadows here helps the shot have some depth to it. Even with my preference being a bit more of the contrasty look as we know, because of the lack of shadows on the Honor 200 Pro, the image just looks much more flatter. That being said, when it comes to the vividness, the saturation, definitely the Vivo goes too far here as well. Now this is a bit of a challenging shot, this bike inside the windmill. I don't think either of these did really solid and there's a second part to this. The Vivo without a doubt has too much sharpening going on. But man, it feels far more like it was when I was there taking the shot. The bike feels like it's standing out much more, where again, with this natural setup on Honor, it feels like it has a haste to the shot itself. And this is why I need to keep switching between different modes on the Honor, because sometimes images can just look washed out. So let's use authentic mode here, and it definitely helps the shot. It makes it better, it doesn't over sharpen like the Vivo V40 Pro, and the washed out feeling is gone. So therefore I would say you need to keep switching between different modes on the Honor to get the best out of it. In this shot, straight away the Vivo feels more balanced, the greens are more accurate and less artificial sharpening going on. However, I do feel like the focus is better on the Honor. The water feels more detailed and the structure, while a lot of sharpening is still going on, has more focus to it out of these two. And it does feel like it's a little bit more detailed on the Honor using of course authentic mode here. And using the ultra wide, again the Vivo, something that I mentioned before, has too much saturation and it's an issue where I feel like they need to work on that. It's simply too much. But in this shot again, it feels more balanced. The sky is much closer to reality compared to what we get on the Honor. And of course again struggling with exposures as well and because of it losing details. Yes, saturation is something that has a preference part to it, but I feel like Vivo here has something to work on when it comes to that saturation side of it. Now often I talk about depth in the shot and this is a perfect example. The Honor again feels much flatter, it's trying so hard to expose everything so well where it simply becomes flat. Where in the V40 Pro side the image has some shadows and because of it it has much more depth. Not to mention that the light itself also has more effect on the chairs because of it. Where on the Honor side again it feels like it's trying to balance out the light and make the shot just look really different than what it really was. And therefore the exposure is not proper here. And that is what makes the image look flat and lose every bit of character that you can have in a shot like this. Here again using natural on honor and the greens are again are better on the honor side. Where it misses a bit of the green that I'm supposed to have, it needs a little bit more. The Vivo V40 Pro simply has a bit too much saturation going on, clearly going towards that warmer feel as well. Again though, on the honor side though, I need to turn down the brightness by a good amount. 
else I would have exposure issues. In terms of contrast, they're pretty close. And honestly, it's perfectly replicated when using the ultra wide here in the shot of the windmill. The comments that I had before are the comments that I have now compared to the main sensor. Though the sign on the honor is far more balanced, even though if you zoom in, it looks somewhat AI generated and that wasn't the right text. Where on the Vivo side, it's a bit overexposed, but it does look more natural apart from the overexposure. Now zooming into this shot, it's a 2.5 times zoom on the Honor, where it's a 2 times zoom on the Vivo. And it's a bit more cropped because of that. Again, the same comments that I had on the main sensor and the ultra wide for both of these. Though I feel like in this case, the Honor does definitely look the better out of the two. This could be because of the composition and being zoomed into it more, but I just feel like the shot just has something more to it. In general, I would say when it comes to shooting on both of these, they need work. The Vivo mostly needs to work on the saturation for myself, because again, I'm not a person that likes too much saturation, but the texture mode does offer that extra contrast that I like, and therefore I should text it on the Vivo V40 Pro. But the Honor really, really needs to work on the exposure and the balance of shots. For almost every single shot that I've taken here in the Open Luchtmuseum, I had to adjust the shot to get close in terms of comparison between these two, where on the V40 Pro, I could just point and shoot. That's a big difference in experience, and it simply makes the Vivo much better in a day-to-day -day use for photography. Now, normally I don't come in between and talk about the experience, but I feel like in this comparison for the V40 Pro versus the Honor 200 Pro, there really is a conversation that needs to be had comparing these two phones. Because, of course, in terms of experience, it's very different. I think the Honor 200 Pro has capabilities where it can fight or sometimes win over the Vivo V40 Pro. But with that being said, there is such a big part of that that is down to me trying to get the balance right because simply put when it comes to of course the honor i need to turn down the exposure i need to keep changing to different modes to get the best out of the phone itself because a lot of times when it comes to natural in less than optimal lighting it starts to struggle it starts to create a haze on the shot itself it starts to look artificial in some shots so i need to then change it to something like authentic where authentic has issues with saturation that shouldn't be a thing where on the vivo yes i can go to for instance size natural then yes it will look more like the natural picture but would lose out on the contrast itself which is something that i enjoy in my shots this is my preference so do keep that in mind in comparisons like this it's my preference and you have to keep that in mind and take note what you like for yourself as well i don't want to push you towards a certain style but when it comes to that kind of experience that's a big part of it i need to keep working on the honor to get the shot close or win over the vivo and that's an important part about this comparison and a really important section about how it comes in daytime photography comparing both of these. Either way, I really want to talk about this before we start showcasing video and of course low light performance as well to showcase how they both perform there. Either way, let's continue and showcase that. Alright, 4K 30 frames because of course the owner is limited to 4K 30 frames per second. The front facing camera, sure color, a bit closer on the Honor apart from that. Honor seems to be lacking details. Also, port 8 and the Vivo is much wider. This is one, and you can see it's basically the same now. Uh, so, for the experience between the two, Honor has highlight issues, exposure problems that it needs to work on. I need to adjust it, press on the shot itself to get the result uh, closer to reality, especially like I showcased with that yellow windmill. Um, yeah, it was just off, basically. Uh, video recording. So the FIFA for me is too bright. Let's turn that down a little bit. Let's so, which is easy to adjust, but I feel like the honor looks very artificial. Of course, you can only fully judge that later on to see, but the screen itself it looks a bit artificial. Too much sharpening going on potentially. The contrast looks a little bit off as well, like it's a filter being applied, if that makes sense. That's alright, the honor is limited to 4K 30 frames per second for the ultra wide. 
not to choose anything because it's so bright in my eyes at the moment. Now when it comes to recording, of course 4K 60 frames per second, you cannot switch to the ultra wide on the FIFA. You can switch to the telephoto. However, for both of them, if you go to 30 frames per second, you can switch to the ultra wide while recording. However, do keep in mind that with the ultra wide itself, you can record up to 60 frames per second in 4K resolution on the Vivo where you cannot with the Honor. That one is limited to 30 frames per second. Finding the right balance in the low light is going to be difficult for both of these. So let's find out how they perform. But I will say 0.8 is definitely much brighter on the Vivo compared to, to the Honor 200 Pro. And also the Honor image doesn't look great. Either way, let's dive into low light photography. And just to showcase the difference in 30 frames, because of course before I recorded 60 frames on the Vivo, which does support it, where it doesn't support it on the Honor, this is the difference. Again, 0.8 on Wolf. This is one time, and this is one time. And this is two times, I don't know why I would want that. And here we are, low light comparison. Now in this first shot, while the contrast is a bit much and the blues are a bit too blue, I would say I prefer the Honor 200 shot here. The nicer darker skies really help, even though I would say that when it comes to the light sources on the wall itself, it needs to be a little bit harsher. What I do like however in turn is that we actually have a proper dark sky, making this feel more like a night shot. In this shot again, I would say I prefer the Honor. Now do keep in mind, with the Honor I still need to turn down the brightness because it does have exposure problems just like in daytime photography. But when it comes to it, I think here the Honor did do really well. Sure, I didn't turn down the brightness on the Vivo, but in general I would say this is just a bit more like how Vivo would normally approach their photography, where with the Honor, yeah, the brightness just has issues. So make sure that you turn down the brightness. And it even extends to some parts where Vivo is known for, proper dynamic range control. And here, funny enough, I think that the Honor did it better. Again, yes, I turned down the brightness to make that shot work, but when it comes to the exposure and the dynamic range of the lights here, it does look nicer at the end. And that story of the nicer dark skies continues here as well. It just makes the shot look more appealing for me, with a bit more contrast to the shot as well, adding some depth to the shot. And in general, when it comes to low light, I think that the Honor does really well. It turns around its performance compared to the Vivo V40 Pro in terms of daytime comparison between these two, with nicer contrast, which sure is a preference, and better low light feel to it. Even if it in parts looks off, when it comes to the main sensor, I think it does well. But do keep in mind, again, with the Honor, I need to turn down the brightness to make these shots work better. But the moment we move to ultra wide, it kind of becomes a different story. Again, the controls of lights are harder for it. But also, while I like my darker shots, it goes overboard with the ultra wide, especially at some shots. And it definitely seems like it's the lesser sensor compared to the Vivo, even though the Vivo isn't perfect by any means with some light source issues. But that contrast and darker look seriously now starts to hurt the Honor, even more so with shots like this where it just looks really poor. And in this shot, where while the Vivo V40 Pro looks a bit washed out, it doesn't really have issues with sky artifacts anywhere near what the Honor does have to deal with here. In general, I would say when it comes to the ultra wide, it loses details compared to the Vivo. But the Vivo is struggling here as well, be it light sources or that more yellow pissy tone that just looks really wrong. While showcasing zoom, I would say that both aren't the best in low light, but the main sensor I will give to the Honor, where the ultra wide I will give to the Vivo, even though it sometimes has that poor color when it comes to those yellow hues. With the zoom, it's a mix between both of them. And now for a bit of low light portrait photography as well. Sadly, I don't have a model, so I need to use myself again. But when it comes to this, uh, there's a big thing to note. When it comes to the Vivo, you have Aura Light. This is a bit of a softer light, a bit more balanced, and you can go for different tones as well, meaning warmer or colder. You can also keep it on or turn it off based on what you want. I will say if you have it off, Images are a lot softer on the Vivo, but when you turn it on, images become more detailed. It isn't as soft as I would like it to be, but it's definitely better than a normal LED. And with the Honor 200 Pro, you don't even have the option to turn the LED on at all when you use portrait photography.
Oh, definitely. I need to get a handle at a few So at the end, when comparing both of these, it's... I think when it comes down to it, I would say that the Vivo here has my preference. It feels a little bit more natural, even though that we know with Vivo you get over-processing as well, depending on the shop itself. But I feel like it's more trustworthy, I get better exposure. I have some exposure issues with the Honor 200 Pro, where it just saturates and brightens things up. And when I use authentic mode, the colors are a bit off and and too much saturation but the biggest thing is it feels more artificial there are some things that i like about it the styles and the feel that i get with portrait mode using of course the portrait mode on the on the 200 pro is nice but then in turn with the vivo i can adjust the for instance the bouquet style i can change how much bouquet there is and i can change the position where the bouquet is focused on where with the on the 200 pro i cannot change the bouquet where I can with the Vivo. And that's something that I find important because for instance, if I try to take a shot of myself and the focus is off with the Vivo, I can adjust it because it captures the whole shot and then tries to of course see where the depth is. With the Vivo, I can then press on myself or something that I'm trying to focus on and then have that focus point there and change the bouquet to what I think works best. I cannot see if I take a shot of myself, how much bouquet I need. And with the Vivo, I can adjust it with the Honor. 200 Pro, I cannot. Not to mention, if you do want to use a flash in low light, for instance with the Vivo, I have that Aura light, I can use it. But if I use depth, I cannot use the flash on the Honor 200 Pro. That's a difference that you have to keep in mind. Sure, with the Honor 200 Pro, if you do use a flash, it's a single flash itself, quite small as well. So the light will be harsher, but it's still something that you're not able to do, even if you wanted to. So that's something that you have to keep in mind as well. And again, I feel like the shots are more artificial when it comes to the Honor 200 Pro versus, of course, the Vivo V40 Pro. Either way, let me know what you find the best out of these two. Which one has your preference out of the Vivo V40 Pro and the Honor 200 Pro? For myself, I gotta be fair and I gotta pick the Vivo V40 Pro with the shots that I've taken so far. The reliability of the shots, the exposure problems that I have on the Honor 200 Pro. So I feel like there, yeah, definitely the Vivo V40 Pro is better. Yes, the exposure problems you can adjust by adjusting the brightness of it itself. But when it comes to comparing it to the Vivo V40 Pro, that one does it better on a point to shoot base. Either way, let me know what you think of both of these devices. If you have any specific questions about the devices itself, of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. And if you watch the video in full, let me know as well because that definitely is helpful as well when it comes to YouTube. Watch time is so important. Um, I don't know how to specifically work on that part because I'm trying to make it that people watch like four or five minutes. That would be beneficial for the channel itself where I'm now. Two to three minutes depends on the video itself. Sometimes with comparison, they're quite a bit longer. So if you have any tips or a reason why you feel like I, I don't want to watch the full video, let me know. Open to feedback and that might help the channel in the long run. Anyway. Hope you have a good one and talk to you guys in the next.